Welcome back, everybody. We are getting close to wrapping this up. There are still just a few things left to add and uh, really to take a look at all the de different detail here. I started to change up the way that I had the legend down there. You may have noticed in previous videos. So I didn't have all the different blocks with the different items in it. Maybe it will look better if I just have a single box down there for the legend and the scale and the north arrow and so forth. There are certainly a lot of things that I could change up. I've got a hodgepodge of a lot of different things going on that I've been doing as uh, I've been going through here to show you different techniques. So yours may look uh, much better than mine here, and maybe I still need to reduce the sort of the strength of the box down there with the legend information and the scale and the north arrow. There's still many different things you critique about what's going on here, and let me tell you that you will continue to find things. I can think of a bunch of different things that uh, I could change right now on this map to improve it. You'll be able to think of things to improve your map, but let me tell you, you will also think of things in the coming days. What I highly, highly recommend is that you print this off just the way that you want it to be and then hang it up in your apartment, in your house, in your dorm, in your uh, office at work, whatever it is that you're doing, go ahead and print it out as if it were the final copy and pin it up where you will look at it uh, every, a hundred times a day. Uh, over the next week and then go ahead and have a pen right there ready a marker and when you see something that's wrong and you will you'll see more and more things that are wrong if you hang it up and you look at it time and time again go ahead and make the mark of the thing that's wrong and then go back a week later and fix everything cartography is not something that you can rush as you found out by going through this tutorial, it takes a lot of time to create a real high quality map. It's something that you're going to have to sit down and work with. The results, if you spend the time, will be absolutely amazing. But it's not something that you want to rush. And moreover, you don't want to rush getting the final copy out. When you finally have it the way that you think you want it, and you hit print, and you've got that first copy of it, that is not your final copy of that map. That's the one you hang up, and that's the one that you look at uh, every day, a hundred times a day for the next week, and then you show it to your other friends who are cartographers and ask them to see what's wrong with it, catch even misspellings, incorrect information, anything on that that another pair of eyes is going to help you find, and then you go back and revise it. Obviously, one of the things that I have not done here is go through and put in all of my text labels. Just for the purposes of this teaching example, I didn't go through and try to put in the text and halo the text on all of them. I showed you how to do it, uh, but if I would certainly need to do that if I were carrying on with this map. I went ahead and added my title, put in the title of the area. I said this is a map as it stood in 1950. You may also notice that beneath the scale down there I put my name and also the date the map was produced. Remember that it's very important to not only have the date that the map was produced, but the date of the data. So in this case, I just made it clear this is different. Remember, this map is of the area in 1950s, we're saying. But it was produced in 2013, so those are two very different dates. You would want to be certain that you also included projection information. Projection information is extremely important to add to your maps because it will tell your user what is accurate and what is not on the particular map. Now what we've been doing right here is just drawing in uh, a pretend area to practice our techniques. So right here I didn't add any kind of uh, projection information because there's not any. But if you go forward to do other courses we'll start actually bringing in data where you do manipulate projections and get the science of the cartography right. So when you have that kind of information and you're not just doing a fictitious place like that, projection information is essential to include on your map. Other things that I'm seeing on this map, little details, well, you know, I did uh, go ahead and add a double border. You can see the upper frame on my map is now a double line. I've got a thicker line on the outside, and then there's a thinner interior line. Uh, one thing I'm noticing is I, I do have the legend uh, text there in bold. I probably don't want that. That might help me condense the legend that I need to do. So I'd probably want to go through and de-bold all of that. And I'm also using one font for just about everything. The title, the subtitle, the N1950, all of the legend, and then my name and when it was produced, and also that N. But then I've got, those are all in a sans serif font, and then I've got a, a completely different font for the miles. I'd want to uh, adjust my fonts here. That does not look right. 
if you do have a bunch of different boxes, I would go through and be certain that uh, the distances, for instance, between this top of this title box and the first little thin line of my frame is the same distance in this little area that it is right here. It's probably not at the moment, but I would want to make sure of that and make sure that that's the same distance between here and the same distance down here. I'm sure that's not, that's too close. If you're using a blur tool, if you're using the drop shadow tool, as I've demonstrated right here, and you have multiple little boxes that are drop shadowed, you would want to be sure that the drop shadow for each one of those different boxes is uh, shadowed according to the same parameters. You don't want some to have a much larger or smaller shadow, unless you really are trying to produce some effect where that's appropriate, but generally you'd want to standardize that. I really think that this map uh, would look very nice with some hill shading in there. Because I've turned the interior all of the countries white, I did that so that I can add stuff inside of the different countries and you would be able to tell what it was very easily. It looks like in this map it would look absolutely beautiful if I had some hill shading in there to represent the terrain. So you could see where the mountains are, you could see where the valleys are and so forth. That's sort of an advanced technique. There are ways of doing automated hill shading. I can't do any automated hill shading here because it is just a made up area. I would have to go in and hand uh, and do my hill shading by hand. There are lots of different ways to represent topography and terrain in a map. That's one of them. And I really want to do a course on uh, advanced terrain representation where we would get into that. How do you draw in the hill shade? How do you use other different techniques for the representation of terrain? on the map. But that's beyond the scope of this course. Despite all of the problems that I was just talking about that I see in this map, I think that it's about time for me to wrap up the tutorial part of this map. We still have a few other topics to cover uh, that have to do with going into ArcMap, also saving this and exporting it correctly. I think that I will uh, leave you with the actual map production part here. Do a lot more practice, get your technique down. Um, and then we will move on to a couple of other topics uh, here in the next lesson.